So here's our snorkeler.jpg image. And uh, what I'm going to do is, um, actually I'm going to reset my Photoshop uh, windows here. So I'm going to go to workspace and reset the essentials workspace that I have. Just kind of start from square one and how we, um, how things should look when you open up the document. Um, first thing I'll do um, beyond this piece is I'm going to actually convert this to um, our CMYK color mode. Um, just for the this instance, we can say that this is for print. Um, and then uh, on my background layer, I'm actually just going to unlock this background layer. Um, this is typically what I would do for a piece right away. And then um, uh, under image and adjustments, I'm going to check the, uh, I'm sorry, image and um, image size, image, image size. I'm going to check the size of the image just to make sure that it's um, a decent size or at a print resolution in this case um, for a print piece, I'll say. So um, under resolution, I'll make sure my resample uh, box is unchecked and then hit 300 and watch as the width and height kind of uh, shrinks there in inches, which is which is which makes a lot of sense because we're adding uh, resolution to the 180 pixels uh, per inch image. And I'll do a quick save. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. So this is a JPEG it started out as. I'm saving it as a Photoshop document, um, which the benefit of that is going to be that I can um, incorporate layers into this piece. So let's work more. Um, <coughs> all right. So uh, next thing I'll do is I'm going to get my other piece of uh, image that I want to work with in this. And this is my shark image. And I'm going to go again to image um, uh, size. And I'll just change that resolution again. You'll see it gets smaller uh, in inches, width, and height. And then so this image is in RGB mode. So I'm going to actually just unlock the background and drag this over to the CMYK um, color document. And so really the difference between the two is very hard to see when I jump back and forth, but um, essentially the blues are kind of a little bit uh, bluer here, and then they kind of get a little muddled in this image. So what happens is when I drag it over, it'll actually convert to um, a CMYK automatically. Since it's a, I'm working, I'm dragging it into a CMYK document. And so um, uh, again, I'm going to use the same tool as last time, which is a transform tool. I hit Command T uh, to get to that. And um, uh, really, I can just kind of rotate this a little bit. My, my goal is to um, even this up with the uh, 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 kind of the perspective or the angle of the uh, um, scene in the background to kind of fit this shark in here. That's kind of where I want it to position uh, for the composition there. And then so um, next move would be, uh, for me in this case, um, in all cases, it will be different, but um, what I'm going to do is go to image, uh, and I'm going to hit uh, adjustments. I'm going to do a destructive color editing uh, move here. Um, this one is a uh, selective color. And so I'm going to uh, select certain tones in this um, shark image. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is match up as close as I can um, this blue tone of water to this greenish tone of water that's in the um, image with the... Uh, diver. Uh, so what I'm going to start doing is kind of hit the blues and the cyans and start to um, move these sliders here in the menu a little bit. And right away I can see that I'm getting closer. Of course I, I'm constantly going into this preview box and kind of checking and unchecking to see how close I am like based on the steps that I'm taking um, here with the sliders to this kind of greenish tone in the background, or whatever color background for that matter that I'm trying to uh, match to. Uh, so I take some uh, magenta out of the cyans in, in here. Take a little more, actually, cyan out of the cyan too, and add a little more yellow. Everything else beyond that is pretty subtle. I'll go back to the blue. Uh, I'm going to take some more magenta out actually. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's really going to get me pretty darn close, but definitely not perfect. 
And so that's where uh, my layer blending mode is going to come in. I'm going to actually just uh, rename some of these um, layers here just to get a little more organized. Uh -huh. So uh, one of the things I'm going to have to do is actually adjust this layer blending mode for the shark. Um, so um, after going through each of these blending modes and trying to figure out which one was the best, I came to the solution that the, um, this one, luminosity, seemed to be really close um, to what I was trying to go for um, to make it look like it was kind of merged both of those images together. Um, so I'm going to keep that luminosity layer there. And step by step, I'm going to get try and get closer and closer to getting this uh, image to kind of merge together with the background to make it look a little more realistic. Um, of course, it won't be 100% realistic rather than taking a picture, but um, this is kind of my next best thing. So what I would do in this situation is actually um, option, click, and drag the, um, the shark artwork in the uh, layers panel here. And then you can see I have like a double arrow here, so a little black arrow and a white arrow. And I'm duplicating that object. And what I'm going to call this is fin, right? Because basically the fin is going to be sticking out of the water and the rest of the shark is going to be sticking in. So some of this image is, you know, going to work with this luminosity layering and some of it's not. So I'm going to bring this fin layer up to normal. And then I'm going to um, zoom in here and pick a selection tool uh, from the many selection tools that we worked with last time. Um, but I'm actually going to just stick with the pen tool, which is for some reason one that I typically gravitate to, especially if it's like a, a, like a really simple uh, sort of shape. So I'm going to trace this thing out as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect either because it's kind of small and sort of in the background, so it's not a real main focus of, of it at all. So with the pen tool, I just trace that um, out and go to my paths palette and find this work path um, here that was created. And then under that drop down again, I'll go to a make selection in the paths palette. Um, leave my feather radius as is at 0.5 pixels and hit OK. And then for, um, you know, I just want to make sure my fin layer is selected, right? So this is the one on top, of that top duplicate. And I'm just going to go to um, select inverse or command shift I. And then um, just hit delete. Okay, so that kind of gives me a sense of the fan, fan um, sticking out of the water. So that's, that'll be um, all I'll deal with that. Now I'll go back to the shark uh, piece. And I'm actually just going to take, um, I think, just like the eraser. And then I'm going to work around, I'm just going to work around these like hard edges here. And then kind of blend this in a little better. What I'm going to do is um, bring my opacity down to like, I'm going to do 30% because I want to see like, I don't want to take too much out, but I don't want to leave too much in. So and then towards the outside, I'm going to go like 50%. And I'm going to make my brush larger with this right bracket. And then as I keep clicking and clicking, it'll just keep taking more out and I'll get closer to where I'm trying to go. And then really, I just want to get rid of this really hard edge. And I can go over this fan pe uh, fin piece just because, um, remember, we're working on the layer beneath the fin, right? So it's not affecting the one on the bottom or the one on the top at all as I'm, as I'm clicking and deleting this area. Uh, let's see. Some of these bigger pieces I'll get rid of. And then um, I'll actually go to my opacity again for my eraser tool, and I'll just go to, like, uh, uh, 20%. And then as I'm getting closer to this object, each of my clicks at 20% are going to be um, a little bit weaker, I guess, as far as strength from a, a erasing standpoint. And of course, my eraser, I'm making sure that my hardness is pretty, um, um, pretty not hard, so closer to the 0%. All right, and then, and um, I'll go down to like. 10%. And then at 10%, I'm going to actually get real close to the shark, right? And then um, the dark pieces of it, I'm just going to go over really quickly. It'll lighten them up, but then it'll kind of help bring out some of that background water a little bit more. 
um, because the waves in that water are a lot um, choppier than the foreground water. So really, I want to make sure that I cut out some of this, too much of this still water, so it kind of fools the eye a little bit better. And I'll probably get a little more aggressive with 20%. All right, so that piece is pretty decent. Get behind that fin a little more. Um, so my next uh, part of this is what I want to do is um, uh, make this uh, shark la uh, layer look like it's behind the leg. I can't really physically put it back there because that leg is essentially part of that background um, as it is. So uh, what I'm going to figure out how to do is figure out what the quickest way to select this leg is. And so after doing this a few times, I figured that the um, magic wand tool is best because really you have a ton of contrast between the leg and the background. You have these a lot of magenta and yellow up against a lot of cyan and yellowish. So um, I'm just going to actually use a wand to grab that those both of those legs and um, uh, what I'm going to do is actually go to my quick mask mode and uh, I'm going to actually kind of refine this selection a little bit more because there's areas that didn't get um, uh, caught with my uh, with my wand, right? So I'm going to kind of go in here, clean up some of this stuff and just add to my selection by brushing it in. Alright, so that's kind of good there. And I want to make sure that my, okay, so yeah, this is a really hard edge brush there, which is fine. It's your, just your typical brush. And make my uh, um, brush a little smaller with my left and right brackets. And then what I want to do is actually go back into quick mask mode and see if I can actually remove some of this selection here in the water piece. Um, and just kind of do it quickly with a brush maybe. So um, I'm going to double click this edit in quick mask mode and then sort of lighten up this uh, opacity of my uh, quick mask area. Um, so I think I'm going to do it like maybe 15% and then see how, yeah, because I want to really see like a lot of that water um, part in uh, behind it. Um, and then I'll use the eraser tool and I'll just uh, go through and just um, you know, it's too light from last time. Remember, we had it 20%. So I'm going to bring it to 100% to make sure that that selection is definitely not there. Okay. All right. All right, so that major stuff is done. Um, so now I'm going to jump out of this quick mask mode. And what I want to do is um, actually um, make a, uh, you know what, I missed a piece. So um, there's actually some parts here that I'm going to have to grab. Probably want to do that. So um, I'll go, instead I'll go to my magnetic lasso and just um, add to the selection that I already started building. And by doing that, I'll just hit shift and then kind of run across the edge here and just let Photoshop finish that selection. Okay. Oop. Mm -mm. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then just a little bit more here. All right, so um, so I don't have to really do that again. I'm just going to go into my paths palette, and I'm going to um, uh, really just hit this create new path button. Um, actually, in this is drop down. I'm going to hit make work path, and then hit OK, and so that'll that'll save that work path there, um, and then I'll just double click and then call it uh, the legs. So. Um, that I can select it whenever I need it. I'm going to need it a couple times. So I'm going to hit the legs again, make the selection. 
and then jump back to my layers and then now I'll start kind of deleting pieces of art. So the shark, I'm going to delete that. That'll put that in the background. And then I have this leftover kind of overlapping piece. So I'm going to actually do a select inverse. And then so this is going to select everything but the leg piece. Um, and then I'm going to uh, um, just erase or tool that shark piece out and deselect. And so at this point, I kind of have a good um, uh, beginning piece. And what I wanted to do now is start brushing in um, uh, some blood in the water because it really is changing the whole concept from like a kind of a peaceful image to more of like a, a shark attack image. Um, so in this part, what I'm going to do is actually go into brushes. And so um, I, let me see, I have, I'm not, I'm not like basically an expert in brushes, but here when you go into the brushes palette, you have a couple um, different types of uh, windows here. So you can actually like create your own brushes um, and uh, it, that's kind of neat but anyhow um, you have all these pre-selected ones too so like you have your generals you have your um, dry media and all these different selections there's just a whole variety of them and so um, you can actually create your own brushes so I created this sample brush down here and you can do this I'm gonna pull this window out you can do this kind of like by picking a starting point and uh, and then and then um, looking at this brush settings dialog box that comes up, and so um, really in this brush settings dialog box, you can select these different categories for a brush and kind of uh, change it up. So I can take an existing one and maybe change it up a little bit. So um, these sliders are really going to help uh, change up your brushes. And when you want to save them. You just hit this little save icon and it'll save this brush and you can create um, a brush library. So this one I created was called My Brushes. So um, what I'll kind of do is kind of give you a sort of a high level overview of, of some of these brush presettings. So um, size, for instance, on this brush will, um, uh, well, these, this is kind of has leaves. So I'm going to see if I can get something a little more. There we go. That's cool. So like size, right, like this will show the size of the stamping of the brush, um, for lack of a better word. Um, angle, you can change um, that piece of it. You can actually manually do this. I'm doing it by the um, uh, shift up and down arrows. Um, or you can just literally like drag the shape around, squeeze these pieces together um, to in, uh, increase or decrease the roundness, let's just say, um, of it. So it's more like an ellipse now. So this is giving me a preview of what this brush is going to look like. Um, you can uh, go to shape dynamics here, and a lot of these are just kind of going through and clicking and testing to see what you, what you like or what's uh, achieving the effect you want. Um, so I'm just kind of moving along these, pen pressure, uh, these types of things. Um, this is really good for a stylus, I think. This would be a great, um, I mean, definitely it would be better for a stylus. Um, but, you know, most of you guys are illustrators, too, so you'll probably be experimenting a lot with this. But let's just say um, color dynamics is an interesting one, too. So I'm going to use color dynamics on the brush that I saved um, for this, uh, for this uh, design. Um, but once you're done with it, you can just kind of click this icon down here for the save. And then um, uh, what you do is just name this thing um, whatever makes sense to you. So uh, I'll just call it, like, sample brush 2 because I don't really have a really good descriptive way of saying what that brush is. Um, of course, other people will be better at doing that. Um, and then I'll just hit OK, and then there it's going to save. And what I can uh, kind of do is like add it to an existing brush library, let's say. So here's my sample brush, uh, and uh, here's my previous one. Um, let's see, what I maybe want to do is um, create a new folder. So that little folder icon, I can create another um, uh, group of brushes, let's just say. Um, and then so as you as you like get more familiar with this and, it, and brushes are the way that you use Photoshop mostly, it's going to make more sense for you to create your own brush libraries and things like that that you might work with frequently to um, accommodate your style and that type of thing. Um, so uh, maybe I'll call this like the Thursday brushes. There. And then so um, this brush will just go on that. So you can kind of, you know, create your own libraries and that type of thing. All right.
right? Um, so for this brush that I have, um, uh, I just created this one. And really, I have um, a couple of these uh, options uh, on it. One is this color dynamics option, which is kind of interesting. It kind of changes the color um, on, the, uh, um, on the artboard as I'm drawing with it. So I'm going to actually use that uh, for the image of the legs. And I'm going to um, pick my color, which I think this is the color that I wanted to pick, right? Yep. All right. All right, so my color's picked, my brush is picked, and now I'm going to go into my layers, and I'm going to create a new layer. And then this is where I'm going to start brushing stuff. Um, oops, I'll delete that extra one. And so I know right off the bat um, that I want to uh, add a this in, in a particular area. So I'm going to actually hit the legs again, the legs path, and I'm going to make the selection again. So then I can isolate the area at which I'm, I'm putting this brush at. So let me see, I think I'm going to make it smaller. Um, I'm going to just brush it in. So like as I'm clicking and dragging, it's sort of changing the color from like light red to like dark red, you know, um, on here with this color dynamics option. Um, it really gives you no control hardly, but it's, um, eh, it could be interesting and, and it kind of, it sort of works for what I'm doing. So I don't want it to be very scientifically like uniform throughout as far as from a color standpoint. Um, and then so um, for this layer, then I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. So it's going to kind of blend it in a little bit better to the legs. And I'm just going to leave that there. But what I'm going to do um, next is actually create another layer. And then this is going to be the uh, red in the water. And uh, so I'm going to go to uh, image. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Select inverse. Okay, so now I have everything selected beyond the legs. Everything but the legs is selected here. And so what I'm going to do with this is um, I'm going to keep the I'm going to keep the brush as is because I can actually you know you can actually go back and like remove some of these options for it so maybe I'll keep the color uh, dynamic piece as is and I'll go again and um, make this larger blend some of this in the water and just see what happens fill it in a bit. So it looks really um, fake now, um, but what I'm trying to do essentially is um, little by little just build this thing up and I'll apply multiply to that right away. Um, and I'm just going to build this little by little until you get somewhere kind of close to where I want it. So I actually option clicked this um, water, gore water layer and I'm going to um, rename this um, um, or water blur. And so I have, I'm working with quite a few layers, but eventually my plan is to actually merge um, uh, these layers together. Um, so it's not so complex here on the on the right side, but once I'm done with doing what I wanted to do. So I go up to filter and I'll go to blur and I'll hit Gaussian blur. because I want to give a sense of like cloudiness in the water. So I'll kind of bring up the pixels a little bit more so it spreads, but then as I do that, it kind of gets less dense in the center. And so what I can actually do is an um, uh, option click and drag again in my um, layers palette here and kind of sort of double up uh, um, the blurriness, if you will, or the thickness of the blur. And uh, so what I'm going to do is actually before I um, del uh, merge any of these layers, I'm going to hit my eraser tool and then really subtly change the opacity to like 30% and then go and basically delete a lot of the blurriness from the outer edge and then let the blurriness um, uh, remain sort of on the inside and I'll turn it, uh, the layers on and off to show you sort of the difference. And this is really just kind of more of an art than a science of course so this is just all um, experimental essentially. And so I'm going to turn this on and off Okay, yeah, so it's showing me 
Oh, it's a little hard to see for you at that angle. This is easier. So yeah, you know, it's showing you sort of a little bit more thickness happening. So that's good. That's kind of what I want um, for the blur. Um, another thing I wanted to do is actually use my uh, smudge tool. So I don't know if you've used the smudge tool, but this is helpful in, um, especially with a composition like this, to kind of make it a little more um, unperfect, I guess, if, if for lack of a better word, as far as the edges of the um, uh, the uh, elements in the uh, in the brush. So let me just kind of select the smudge tool and what I can do with this oh I gotta change the brush again why all right okay so what I can do with this is increase or decrease the strength of the smudge so um, and it's a very arbitrary type of a number but um, what I really want to do is get into this um, very blurry piece of the water and sort of smudge it to make it look like it's moving around a little bit <coughs> Yeah, let's try a darker piece. Well, I'll go to this layer here to make it more obvious. It might be too much, but you can kind of click and drag and see what happens. I'll make it larger. And the more strength, the more it's going to pull, I guess, for lack of a better description. I'll do it at 55% and then see if it pulls a little bit more. Something like that. And I probably did this a little too early because I wanted more speckle, more speckle in there. I really like this tool when I'm working with uh, multiple colors. So I can blend colors together and just make things more colorful and interesting. Um, so now I'm looking at it. I'm just going to add one more layer and um, I'm going to change the brush a little bit. So I'm going to go back to that brush setting that I had saved under my brushes here. I'll click on it and I'll go to brush settings once again. And um, I'm going to turn off this color dynamics um, uh, portion of it. And then just under this piece, then I'm going to add like more thickness here onto this new layer. Just because I see like some inconvincing blending. And then again, I'll have to hit this multiply blending mode there to kind of create the layering that I was looking for and I'll add more as I'm working there uh, so yeah that's pretty close so um, yeah that's that's that part um, so once I'm done with what I pretty much want I'm gonna actually merge these layers together so all these kind of layers that I was experimenting with I'm gonna select them by uh, hitting shift click on all the layers that I want to select and I'll go control click and then I'll hit merge layers. Oh, and I'll have to make sure that um, I hit the multiply blending mode. So as I merged them, the blending mode turned off. Um, otherwise, you can actually even, um, let's say for instance, you didn't want to merge those layers. Um, I'll go back a couple steps. Um, you could just as well select the layers that you want to kind of simplify, let's say, and then hit this folder icon and then that'll just turn it into a group. And if they're a group, I can just expand this group folder and see a bunch of layers creating one group. And then I can just call this like water gore. So that can be more descriptive as to what it, I'm actually looking at. And then you can turn that stuff on and off. And then um, my last part for the legs, I wanted to actually just smear some of that on there. So it didn't look all so uniform. And so, we, yeah, so so far we've been doing uh, destructive color editing to this whole thing. And uh, um, what I'd like to do is then, I'll add this into that folder. 
And uh, so what I'd like to do is do uh, show some non-destructive color editing in this image. I'm just grouping all these layers together if I can. Um, and I'll, show you, I'll show you a sample of that. So um, this is just a, like a simple color correction, let's say. So if we go to um, select, let's see, I'm sorry, layer. Uh, so under layer, so image adjustments is your destructive color editing and mostly all of the other, um, basically all of the other um, color editing we've been doing so far. If you go to layer and new adjustment layer, this is your non-destructive color editing um, piece. So um, you have hue saturation, um, you have selective color, you have a lot of the same stuff, ba basically all of the same stuff, except what it's going to do instead of changing the art in and of itself, it's going to add a layer. So I'll show you hue saturation and I'll hit OK. It's basically going to open up this properties palette and then another thing it did is it added a layer onto the layer that I had selected previous <coughs> when I went to layer new adjustment layer. So um, this basically has the same the same uh, sliders as the uh, destructive color editing. So hue, right? This is the one that will change um, the hue of the entire image, uh, uh, perhaps. So um, so there's that. But what I can, what's interesting about this is I can co completely change this whole thing, and then I can turn this layer off and then turn it back on. So if I wanted like a, that's like more of a pop art thing or whatever. Um, and then if I wanted to add a new adjustment layer. If I wanted to experiment more, right, with different hue and saturations um, in the image, I could then just go and add a new adjustment layer onto it. Um, I can see the previous, and now I can see by turning this layer off and then changing the properties of this piece, um, new properties, right? So this is like a really dark um, version of it. You can actually even like combine both layers together. So I have like three options here um, for an image. Um, so long story short, that's pretty much how um, those work essentially. But what I want to do is show you how you can mask um, using those adjustment layers. So I'll go to new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and hit OK. Um, next what I want to do is um, under this master here, this is uh, targeting the master um, colors of hue saturation in the image. But you can actually target colors just like selective color. Um, so I can target the reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, all of those colors that we um, talked about uh, throughout this time. So if I go to yellows, now I'm targeting just the yellows in the image, and I can adjust the hue saturation for those pixels. Something like that. So what I essentially want to do is, um, is not change, I want to change just these flippers, but not the legs. So how to do that? Um, I would actually have to make a selection. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, go to my um, quick mask uh, selection. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not quick mask. Quick mask options, yeah. thought I misspoke. Um, so I'm going to go to that quick uh, mask option menu there, and I'm going to hit my brush tool. I'm going to select my basic brush that I've always been using. And then for this, I'm just going to kind of very like like kind of roughly trace the area that I want to change the hue saturation for that image in. Because I know that the sky is not going to really change that much because as I was doing my experimenting, only the only other piece of it that was changing was the leg. So then I'll come out of this quick mask mode and then I'll go into um, uh, this, this menu again and I'll target the yellows and then I'll just change the yellow pixel. Oh shoot, you know what? That's not working properly. Let me jump back a little bit. I'm actually needing to do delete that. Um, I should have to click that. Let's try it again. Oh. Well, let me delete this layer altogether. I'm going to try to add a new layer again. Um, I have to do it actually after I created. So I created my selection first, and then I have to add my layer, new adjustment layer. Okay, yeah, that looks better. So then this area here, it's going to show the mask 
um, as the selection area that I made. And so I could turn it uh, on or off if I go into here and then um, uh, I'll show you that piece later. But first what I want to do is actually just go ahead and um, change this uh, color a little bit. There we go. And so um, once I change those flipper colors to what I'm going for, um, I, my selection originally, before I made that adjustment layer, wasn't perfect. Um, so um, really what I can do is uh, um, kind of perfect it uh, by jumping into this um, icon here. And so to do this, I can refine this selection, um, and they call this a mask, by um, hitting uh, Alt-Shift. And so if I click this and hold Alt-Shift and click it, um, I'll be able to um, use my brush to kind of change, refine the selection, and then jump back out into the image and see the changes of the um, uh, hue saturation filter. Um, so Alt-clicking that, and then uh, hitting the brush tool and then making the brush pretty small, I can actually add a little bit more here to kind of refine that a little bit better. And then if I click off of it, then um, you, you'll see that it kind of took away some of that redness in that ankle part. Um, okay, so and you should be able to just, you know, um, mess around with that, but really um, you know, what you want to do is just make that selection first and then add your layer, new adjustment layer onto it.